Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on how five different laryngeal muscles can contribute in the modulation and the adjustment of the vocal fold stiffness and thereby modulating and adjusting the vibrating frequencies of the vocal folds. There are several ways in which the laryngeal muscles can adjust the vocal fold stiffness and thereby control several voice parameters, including vocal pitch, loudness, and voice quality. This is basically achieved through repositioning of the vocal folds into an optimal position for voice production. Also, uh, deforming of the vocal fold by stretching or compression, change of the length, the breadth, or the depth of the vocal fold itself, and by changing the vocal fold stiffness and tension. Changing the vocal fold stiffness and tension can lead to two important changes. Changes in the mechanical properties of the vocal folds itself, and also controlling the geometry of the glottal canal. So to start with, laryngeal muscles can modulate and fine tune some of the mechanical properties of the vocal folds, uh, including things like the natural vibrating frequency of the vocal folds, the eigen frequency, and the vocal fold stiffness. The natural vibrating frequency of a structure would depend very much on the way the mass and the stiffness are distributed along the configuration of that structure, along its length, breadth, and depth. All structures uh, would have a natural vibrating frequency, and that would change uh, according to the way the vibrating mass and the stiffness are distributed within that natural vibrating frequency. Generally speaking, the stiffer a structure is, the higher its elastic modulus is, the higher the natural vibrating frequency is. So it would vibrate at a higher natural vibrating frequency. Several factors contribute in the adjustment and modulation of the vocal fold vibrating frequencies, the F0 of the glottal source signal. This modulation is largely achieved by the control of the stiffness and the tension in the anteroposterior direction of the vocal folds. But other factors like the vocal fold length, the vocal fold vibrating mass, and the extent and the duration of the vocal folds contact during voice production, and the vocal fold depth, the depth of the median edge of the vocal fold, and the contact mode with the other vocal fold during phonation also contribute to the fine-tuning of the vocal fold frequency. All these factors are under neuromuscular control and variation and their uh, effect on the F0 is achieved in several ways. We would go through this in this presentation. Starting with the major adductor muscle of the vocal folds, the lateral cricoarytenoides. This is the muscle that uh, brings about the two vocal folds in adduction to meet uh, towards the midline during phonation. Helped by a weaker adductor, the interarytenoidus muscle. Both muscles, the lateral cricoarytenoid and the interarytenoidus muscle, displaces the vocal fold medially, but with little change in the vocal fold uh, length and also slight effect on the vocal fold stiffness. But the lateral cricoarytenoids and the interarytenoids have some major contribution in the determination of the fundamental frequency, but through two effects. The first is to stabilize the arytenoid cartilage uh, and prevents its forward tilting if the arytenoid cartilage is subjected to uh, tension during stretching of the vocal folds 
by, for example, the cricothyroid muscle. The stabilization here is required not only by the lateral cricoarytenoid and the interarytenoid muscles, but also with a contribution of the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. This uh, stabilization is important to achieve maximum stretch of the vocal cord length uh, under the effect of the cricothyroid muscle, particularly in high uh, uh, vocal fold frequencies. The other contribution of the lateral cricoarytenoid and the interarytenoidus is that they increase the extent and the duration of the vocal fold contact during vibration. Uh, particularly with increasing subglottic pressure. Uh, this uh, longer contact and uh, more deep contact of the vibrating vocal folds would lead to an increase in the fundamental frequency. Changing the vocal fold length and the vocal fold stiffness can be achieved by two other muscles, the cricothyroid muscle and the thyroarytenoidus, the vocalis muscle. Simultaneous changes in the vocal fold length and the vocal fold stiff stiffness can be achieved due to the intrinsic property of the vocal fold uh, tissues, the nonlinear stiffness of the vocal fold uh, tissues. Without the nonlinear stiffness of the vocal fold uh, tissues, uh, changes in the length would not be associated with any increase in the stiffness. We have just discussed that changes in the stiffness along the anteroposterior direction of the vocal fold is a major determinant of the vocal fold uh, frequency. Activation of the cricothyroid muscle would lead to an increase in the vocal fold length by stretching the vocal folds and also an increase in the vocal fold stiffness. These two uh, actions would have opposite effects on the vocal fold fundamental frequency. The uh, increase in the length would normally lead to a drop in the fundamental frequency as a shorter vocal folds would vibrate at a higher rate than longer vocal folds. But it is the increase in the vocal fold stiffness that dominates to the net result of activation of the cricothyroid muscle on the fundamental frequency is to increase the fundamental frequency through its effect on uh, the vocal fold stiffness. The effect of the thyroarytenoidus muscle, the vocalis muscle, on the vocal fold fundamental frequency is a little bit more complex. The thyroarytenoidus muscle tends to stiffen and uh, tense the vocalis muscle itself, the body layer of the vocal fold tissues, the core layer. Uh, but at the same time, it shortens the vocal fold length, and this would lead to a decrease in the stiffness of the cover layer of the vocal fold. So there would be an increase in the stiffness of the core layer of the vocal fold and a decrease in the stiffness of the cover layer. This change in the body cover stiffness ratio was noted to increase the duration of the glottal closure and also increase the vocal fold frequency. On the other hand, depending on the depth of the body layer involved in the vibration, the increase in the uh, thyroarytenoidus activation can either increase or decrease the vocal fold fundamental frequency, as we shall see now. The final effect of activation of the thyroarytenoidus muscle on the vocal fold fundamental frequency can vary depending on several uh, specific vocal cord conditions. We'll go through three of these conditions. And the first two uh, specific conditions, they relate to the condition of the vocal fold length. If the vocal fold is elongated, as is often the case during phonation, then activation of the thyroarytenoidus muscle would lead to a decrease in the vocal fold fundamental frequency. 
a drop in the F0. But if the vocal folds are only slightly increased or slightly compressed, then activation of the vocal of the thyroarytenoidus muscle would actually increase the fundamental frequency. The other factor is the effect of the activation of the thyroarytenoidus on the vertical depth of the medial edge of the vocal fold during phonation. Um, it would tend to increase the vertical depth of the vocal fold and also it will produce a more medial compression between the vocal folds during their contact. So both these factors, the increase in the vertical depth and the medial compression of the two uh, vocal folds medial ends would tend to increase the extent and the duration of the vocal fold contact during the vibratory cycle and both these factors would lead to an increase in the fundamental frequency. So the uh, final effect of thyroarytenoidus on the vocal fold uh, fundamental frequency would vary. Sometimes it would increase, sometimes it would decrease the fundamental frequency depending on the vocal fold specific conditions. And finally, uh, these two muscles, the cricothyroid and the thyroarytenoidus, can also change the glottal geometry, the configuration of the glottal uh, canal during phonation, the mode of contact of the two vocal folds. The cricothyroid muscle would stretch the vocal folds and reduces the vertical thickness of the vocal folds' medial edges. Uh, whereas the activation of the thyroarytenoidus muscle would do the opposite. It would increase the vertical thickness of the vocal fold medial edge and also help in the medial bulge of the inferior part of the vocal fold uh, medial edge during phonation. Uh, the action of the thyroarytenoidus here would help with a better and a longer uh, contact mode of the two vocal folds, whereas thinning and stretching of the vocal fold edges by the cricothyroid would do the opposite. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on how the activation of laryngeal muscles can fine tune, modulate the vocal fold stiffness and vocal fold mechanical properties. Salam alaikum.